Uh, my name is Rebecca. I work for the European Internet Exchange Association. Um, I know we have some members in here who know who we are, but how many of you, by a show of hands, have never heard of EuroIX? <laughs> okay. It seems like a lot of you do know who we are, but I'm just going to give a brief overview of our activities. So we are a membership association. We have 73 IXPs so far in the association. Um, 54 of these IXPs are from the EuroIX region, and we have 19 from the rest of the world. What do we do exactly? We do a number of activities and also operate the IXPDB, which I'm going to talk about um, a little bit later. We have two fora per year. Um, the most recent one that we had was in Toulouse, and it was hosted by Toulouse IX and France IX. Um, we are also going to hold another one in October, which will be hosted by AMSIX and Zandam. We have the website and database. As I said, we'll talk about that in a little, little while. We have programs for IXPs that uh, I need. Uh, the first one that we have is the fellowship program. And the fellowship program helps IXPs to be able to attend your IX fora um, if they cannot afford to do so or they need a little bit of help to do that. Then we assist them to be able to attend the forums. And um, we also have the Mentor IX program, and this is for IXPs in need who, they may need some help in specific areas that we have more established IXPs that are able to help them. So we partner the IXPs with um, more established IXPs to help them. Uh, it may be marketing, it may be need of switches or equipment, wherever that they need, we help them to attain that. Um, we're currently working on a peering toolbox with a number of different organizations within the community. Um, and this will be information that is best common practices. Um, and as soon as it's you know, available on the website, we'll let the community know. We have a number of reports. And we also have a monthly newsletter. The newsletter contains information about our IXPs and the general community. If you have information, um, that you want to include and to disperse to the community, please let us know. Um, please subscribe also. Now, something that we're trying to bring awareness to is the roots of a large BGB communities list. So this is a standard list of BGB large communities um, that is honored by IXs. And if you are looking to peer um, and looking to pay with large communities, you don't have to make this list yourself. So we have this list that's already done. It's on the URIX website. Um, you can go there and have that information. We are also present on a number of social media, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, because we like to talk to each other and we like to talk to you also. So if you have anything that you want to say, please let us know. We don't have a traditional sponsorship method. Um, for our organization, but what we do have is patrons, and there are interested um, parties, organization vendors within the industry that do help us um, with a variety of things. So if there's anyone from any of these organizations here, we'd like to say thank you. And I'm going to move on to the main subject of today, which is the IXPDB. And to give a little bit of history, it's not a new database. It's something that has existed since the formation of URIX. We have just realized that with membership um, consultation and with growth of the membership and growth of IXPs around the world, we needed to redo this in a different way. Um, we realized that to enable that growth and to have things automated, which was a key point for us, that we needed to start this all over again, and which is what we have done. We contracted the work out to CZ Nick, who some of you know are the developers of Bird and some other very interesting tools. So we knew that we'd be in uh, very good hands. So you can access the IXPDB via ixpdb.urix.net. And on the home page, we have tried to show some very uh, concise information, snapshot information of the IXPDB. 
Uh, first of all, we have the regional ASN count. Um, what we've tried to separate IXs into different regions, um, and the way we've done that is by the Internet Exchange Federation model. We know that some countries do not fall into traditional or they're in between uh, associations, but we try to split this as logical as possible. So we have um, the Af African Internet Exchange Association, we have APEX Asia Pacific, we have EuroIX, we have LACIX, which is the Latin America Caribbean, and North America, which as yet doesn't have association, so it's a standalone at the moment. Um, and you can see also a snapshot of the most connected ASNs um, and this is work that is updated um, directly from the IXPs using a JSON. So you can see on the IXP tab, I'm gonna go back a little bit. Um, sorry. gone into reader. Thank you. You can see on the IXP tab, um, if I can use the pointer, <laughs> would be good. Uh, the IXP directory, we have four categories so far. The IXP directory, the ASN directory, uh, the root server directory, and the switch directory. So what this is basically that you can search for IXPs within the database um, using their name, um, their IXF ID, and this is a unique identifier um, for each and every IX that's in the database. Um, you can search for IXPs that use an only API. You can search for IXPs in the regions uh, that I mentioned before, Affix, Apix, uh, URIX, LACIX, and North America. Um, you can search for IXPs by their name, city, uh, country, or the cant. We also have information whether the IXP is MANUS compliant. And does anyone know what MANUS is? Yeah, so some of you do know what that is, but it's in a, in a very short snapshot. It's a, it's a security, um, route, route and security um, norms that have been put together by Internet Society for ASNs and IXPs, and they work together for, with this. And so any IXP which is uh, MANUS compliant, we do have that indication in the database. So when you go into the IXP, uh, when you search for IXP, whichever one you've searched for, you're able to see the IXP profile. This gives a snapshot view of the IXP, um, you have their logo, their organization name, where they're located, um, the number of ASNs connected to the IXP. Um, I've used a few examples of IXPs that are in this room. So I used uh, B6 from Berlin, I used Interlan, and also um, Bix Bulgaria. So you're able to see um, straight away um, I go back a little bit. Um, a bit of profile information on the peer in LAN. Um, the next tab shows the points of presence, so where is uh, that XP located, and information on switches. We have also the ASN's presence at that IXP, and a little bit of information whether they're in peer in DB, um, the number of connections that they have at the exchange, and so on. We also have the traffic tab, and this shows information and traffic on that IXP, and it's broken down into day, week, month, and year. So I'm going to show you how you can use uh, the database. So if you have uh, an IXP that you're interested in, maybe you wanna see the IXPs in a certain country, or, um, you know, in a certain city. You can search using the IXF ID, the name, the city, or the country, and you add the IXPs to the database by clicking on the plus sign. So you can click on as many IXPs as you want, there's no limit, 
And this enables the comparison tool. When you hit the compare, and you'll have this. As I said, I've used B6, BixBG, and Interlan. So this gives you a snapshot view of what's going on at each of the IXPs. So if you had 50, it'd give you a 50 point view of the IXPs. Um, it includes information on the number of locations, whether they have monitoring tools, the topology, um, and also even further information, including the port speed, et cetera. What's also very interesting is that you have the number of common ASNs at that IXP, and you also have the number of unique ASNs, so ASNs which are present at B6, but not at BixBG and Interlan, and vice versa. Um, similarly to how we have the uh, IXP directory, the AS ASN directory also works in the same way. So we have uh, the ASN number, it shows you the type of ASN, whether it's content, uh, gaming, uh, et cetera. And it has also the number of IXPs connected to that ASN. You can use it in the same way to compare ASNs. So you search by the ASN number, the name, city, or country. Again, you hit the plus tool, and you hit compare. Um, I've, for the purpose of this presentation, I've compared Akamai Technologies and Limelight, which are two of the biggest content providers. So um, you can see there a snapshot view of uh, the organizations, and then you have which IXPs are common to that ASN, and further, which IXPs are unique to that ASN. So which IXPs like AM6 Caribbean is present at Akamai, but not at Limelight. And a very important thing to do is to clear your search. Otherwise, it would really give you really uh, interesting results if you try to go on further to do further things. So on the network tab, just to show you, if you click on a single network, you can have the information on who they are and what they do, and also the IXPs at that uh, ASN. We are also working, um, we do have, but we're working further on a root server directory. Um, you have all the information there, but what is missing is the operating version um, and operating, um, sorry, the operating name and the version of that root server. Uh, we're working on an um, updated version of the JSON schema so that we can include that information in there. Similar to that, we have the switch directory. If you're looking for particular switches, uh, you can search by name, the brand, the model. Um, what's missing is the software, which again will be in uh, the updated version of the JSON. So what's next? Um, as I said, we're working on the new JSON, which will be published very soon. Um, we're also working on authentication because uh, some of our members have expressed that they don't want everything published, so they will have the options of what to make private and what to make public. So this can be information on switches or, or the root server, but what we will do is to publish this information in an aggregated format. Um, we're also working on analysis tools and mappings, how to search by city and country. Um, we really need the input of the community, the IXPs, to keep your data up to date in the XPDB. Um, today we have 94, 95 exports, but we want to grow this. We want more IXPs to be in the database. We want them to have accurate information that is collected directly from the IXP, so we don't have any input. Everything is automated. Um, and so it would be good to, for us to work together and to get this sorted. And other information, we have a mailing list for users. You can subscribe. Um, the GitHub uh, JSON schema is on the GitHub page. The API is live at api.ixpdb.net. And we do have an admin team that is helping us to get our, everything in order, and we thank them for that. I know Arnold is in the room and he's working very hard with us to do that, so thank you. And if you think this is good work and you'd like to help us or to assist in any way, please get in contact with us. 
I'd like to also say thank you to our sponsors. They are, uh, you know, been a great help. We can't do much of the work without them. So thank you to them if anyone's in the room from these uh, organizations. And that's it, thank you. Are there any questions? <laughs> I see a question coming. Hi, my name is Vesna. I'm from RIPE NCC, and uh, I realize that a lot of people here are quite shy. They don't ask questions, so <laughs> I'm going to do it instead of them. Thank you. Uh, so, um, since there isn't really yet operational IXP in Bosnia, but they are in the process of creating one, what is your recommendation for them once they're created or even before? What are the things that they can do right now and then, like the actions that they can take away from here and say like, okay, so yeah. in the next few months we have to do this, 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 and this. I'm kind of channeling Hisham who keeps asking this yeah. very practical question. So if you have like really practical advice for them. Thank well, you. I've been talking with Enes and he's, he's been emailing us to get everything up to date. So. Um, BHNICs are in the database at the moment. He's keeping us abreast of what's happening and what they need, whether it's switches or equipment. Um, I've been informed that ISOC are helping with this. And what we encouraged him to do is actually to um, apply for the fellowship, which will be uh, for the October Forum, to attend, to speak with the IXPs that are there and see how they did it. You know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. There are IXPs who have been established 20 plus years. So he will be able to learn what they did and also to partner with them to get everything up and running. So that's, that's the advice I gave him yesterday. Um, and after that, you know, it's, you get membership to the um, association and also you get mentored, like, as I mentioned before. So we're able to partner them with more, um, you know, people who've been there and done that. Um, they don't have to do it by themselves, basically. Thank you. So also on the behalf of the uh, program committee, uh, I would love to see this kind of presentation updated next year in Slovenia where, okay. when we have the SEE9 meeting. So nice. Okay. Consider Thank you. yourself invited. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you very much. I appreciate that.